Hallelujah. The year has begun. The race has begun. And God is said to do great things in this year. Great things are installed for you and great things are installed for me. But there's a path, there's a way that God desires us to follow. And that's why the way you begin is quite important. In every sprint race, 100 meter dash, you see the takeoff point. What the sprinter is ensuring that he's able to lift up with a great push in that sprint so that at the end of the day he can breast the tape of laurels of championship. I pray that this year, 2019, as a university, we will break records. As individuals, you will break records. The word of the Lord has gone concerning us speaking and saying this year we would have dominion. Come on, say I have dominion. It's important to start up to put us in the right perspective because for some of us who may not be within this um, commission to understand the covenant greeting. So please can you flash the covenant greeting on the, on the screen? And this is where we are going because you see you need to know uh, the syllabus of where you are so that you can understand. Last year it was my new dawn and we saw breakthroughs on every side. It was a new dawn for Covenant University. All manners of blessings and favor from God on every side. So let's take these Covenant greetings and you may ensure that um, from time to time because every time someone comes on the altar here he speaks the, the first word. So let me start. I have dominion. What's your response? And I take dominion. What's your response? Then congratulations. Let's take it one more time. I have dominion. And I take dominion. Congratulations. So dominion. That is what God is saying concerning us in Covenant University this year and also this semester. Dominion over the challenges of life. Dominion over every one thing that the enemy may be shooting at you. Dominion. That is the design. That is the desire of God for me and you in the year 2019. Dominion. Say it one more time, I have dominion. I'm excited to hear testimonies of great help of God. That daughter of Zion said she blanked out. That's why the Bible says the horse is prepared against the day of battle. But who gives victory? The Lord. Who gives victory? The Lord. She said, I won't tell anybody, but I'll come and tell it to Jesus. That's the way. That's the way. Some people are too confident in their strength and... I don't know how your result looks like, but it's between you and God. You are aware. When you felt too pompous to be in the presence of God, even too very, very confident to even come for prayer, not to even say that you are even coming for chapel service or covenant hour of prayer. No, just say, uh, you are just too confident. But there are some now who have eaten their pride, who felt they had everything. But you saw that daughter of Zion, she, she, she was prepared as she ought to be. But still yet, something happened. But listen, remember, God is the one that covers your errors and color your efforts. Ah, how many saw that kind of testimony last semester? Mm -hmm. And those who plug out of grace are the ones that get disgraced. You remember the video we said, I'm sure maybe this semester we'll try to see a time where we'll show you grace unplugged. Some people have plugged out of grace and many, they are walking inside so much disgrace. But as for me and you, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. And I tell you this semester and this year, you and me, we will do valiantly. Amen. Oh, I didn't hear your amen. amen. 
I said we will do valiantly. By the help of God, I remember sharing with the staff and faculty, not by power, nor by mind, but by my spirit. He said, listen, when the spirit be poured from on high, then the wilderness will become a fruitful field, and a fruitful field will be counted as a forest. The spirit of God. Now, dominion is what is set for us. At the end of this year, you will look back and you will see that everywhere the sole of your feet has tread upon, God has given you. Did I hear? Believe in amen there. But how shall these things be? How shall these things be? That was what Mary asked when the Holy Ghost came. The angel of God came and told her, hey, you are going to conceive a son. And this, and this I am not aware. I am a virgin. What is this? And he said, don't worry. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. The power of the Most High will be made available to you. And watch. That holy thing is going to come out of you. So, listen to me. You may look, not look like it now. 100 level students who are here, there are some who have already started building. Hey, you better be awake. There's one of, I've, not only one, there are quite a number looking through of the, some of the results and all that 5.0 one of the daughters of zion i saw 100 level 5.0 i said give me you have a gift and she never misses one service not one covenant hour of prayer not one chapel service involved as a steward in the house of god why there are some who are still playing playing away <laughs> Uh, it's over to you. It's over to you. The choices you make. You're already making choices. He said, listen, today, this is life. Cursing and blessing. Choose, choose, choose. You have already started making choices. Some people may not wake up now till they get to 300 level, quarter to graduation. It's not to them. Oh, I'm going to graduate with a third class. Now, I said this morning in Covenant Hour, I graded the, uh, the various grades in school to this. First class is an automatic door. How many have stood before an automatic door? When you approach, it opens on its own. How many of us have seen that kind of door before? That's what a first class gives you. Every door opens as a first class. Now, second class upper, you will need a remote control. You will need a remote control. It's still automatic, but you still need a little press. Now, second class lower, you will need to knock the door. You will need to knock the door. Third class, ah, you will need to bang the door. <laughs> then pass or whatsoever, ah, they won't even open the door for you. So, which one do you want? Let me ask your neighbor. Automatic remote control, knocking, which one do you know? <laughs> How many want the automatic door to be open for them? Eh? But it doesn't come cheap. Ah, talk is cheap. It doesn't come cheap. Everything of value, God's servant serve, has a cost. Everything of value has a cost. Cost attached to it. There is no free lunch in life. You know, some young ladies and all that, you see a man who is trying to give you, or uh, maybe some of you now, when you get out of school and uh, maybe even before you get out, somebody is saying, okay, I want to buy you lunch. Which lunch? He's preparing you for something else. Maybe those ones in Cyrus now, may God give them understanding. Um, because I know the Cyrus students also need to be connected. We want them to be connected. I told some of them, make sure you are connected because I'm going to be speaking to you even outside of the school. That's why our social media will be up completely. Because some of them, they are in Cyrus now. They will just see somebody and say, oh, this guy is very nice. Oh, he carries me. He will tell you, where is your house? Oh, come and carry you. Then takes her. Maybe today, maybe she has just resumed school. I mean, resume work now. And he said, okay, how are you, young lady? What's your name? He said, my name is Abiodun. Where are you coming from? From Covenant University. Oh, what a good school. And she's looking very blush and looking. And he said, okay, can you have lunch with me this afternoon? He said, ah, this guy seems to be very nice. Okay. <laughs> Mumu. 
what is preparing you is for. <laughs> hello, hello. That seemingly nice guy is an evil one. Preparing chicken for the day of slaughter. <laughs> you are laughing. So he's, he's too good, too smooth. And moreover, obviously, he just carries you first dinner, then second dinner, then less than carry you drop. And look at, maybe the young man is 10 years advanced your age. A 20, what is 20? 19, 20. And you are dealing with a guy that is 39 or is 29. Ah, uh, you are so okay. His brain is far more developed. So he's just playing all the draft, doing all the things. Then the young lady thinks he's having free lunch. Free for what? They are preparing you for slaughter. No free lunch, young men and women. Be awake to the consciousness of the price you need to pray in life. So listen to me. We have started the year and we must start it well if you want to see the hand of God. And that's why this message this morning, unveiling the power of the prayer altar. Somebody says every time prayer. Yes, every time prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. But prayer is the covenant force that keeps you on a flying mode. Prayer, prayer, prayer. There is no 747 aircraft that will just feel, okay, today I've taken off from Mulita Mohammed Airport, we just take off into the air. And when it gets to 35,000 feet above sea level, he said, okay, now I'm comfortably flying. I can switch off my engine. Gravity will soon tell you, excuse me, 747, you can go down to the ground. Simple. Some people, and I want to say this even to fact, I was saying to someone, Canaan is a place of contention. Many people come to Canaan, both university, staff and student, and think it's a place to relax. No. Go to Israel on, on, on a pilgrimage. You will see the Israeli. They are 24-7 on alert. Enemies are all around. This is not the place to sleep, sir. Be awake. Canaan is a place dominion has to be established and consistently be established. The day you refuse to establish your dominion, the enemy comes in. Somebody is asking, why am I having the kind of issues I'm having in Canaan? I thought all the prayers have been played. The ground has been anointed. Excuse me. You have a responsibility to take your portion. Somebody says, I'm coming to Covenant University. Everything is just fine. So I just do everything on Shramaki. No, you have a responsibility. And that is why prayer and the prayer altar comes in. That's why the prayer and the prayer altar comes in. Okay, the Israeli today, they can sit there and just say, okay, uh, we are just okay. The Palestinians will run them down in no minute. Syrians are waiting to chop off their head. Iraq and Iran is waiting to push them into the sea. For the number of years they have been on that land, they have occupied. Standing strong day and night. And they don't trust anybody, including you, the tourist. That's why they will search you to everywhere to ensure that you are not a part of the cabal that is wanting to dislodge them. And if they find you as one, they push you out. So prayer, young men. Prayer, young women. To faculty, to staff, the accomplishment we desire this year will be on the platform of the foundation that is laid. And it's time to lay the foundation. So look at the 21 days fasting and prayer as has been declared in the winner's family and which is admonished that every one individual, staff or faculty. Now, you, somebody may say, okay, I'm not part of this uh, commission. It doesn't matter. Almost every mission in Nigeria today and it's a covenant principle to wait upon the Lord because what you do with the first matters. Somebody says it's an ulcer. What ulcer we go to blazes? What kind of ulcer is that one? I remember pastoring last year. I told everyone, let the ulcer not confuse you. You better send it out. Send it out. And don't give excuse. You need prayer. You need fasting. You need to put yourself online. To ask for the right way. Have you not heard? In Ezra chapter 8. From verse 20 to 22. He said, listen to me. A fast was declared in Ahava. 
Why? To seek the right way to go. Not only for us, for our children and for our substance. So your business, there's a right way to go. So that you don't keep doing experiment all over and over and over again and laborious exercise without getting any result. But this time around, this year, you try it once and you hit the target. Can I hear an amen there? And that will be on the platform of inspiration of God. We need the prayer altar. Prayer does not only change situations, but always changes people. We saw in Exodus chapter 34 how prayer changed the face. Changes the face of Moses. And it came to pass that Moses came down from my Sinai with two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the mount, Moses will not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him. Listen to me. As you subscribe on this prayer altar, this first month, every devil will be afraid to come near you. Amen. To know that prayer is very important. Oftentimes, I, I make this illustration in the church. I say, how many individuals in the church observe that during the fasting and prayer of the month of January, they don't see the strange husband, the strange wife, the spirit husband, the spirit wife, all manner of troubles you find out that, you know what the enemy does? They say, ah, they are blowing hot now. Just leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They move very far. Because, hot, do you see flies around hot food? No. But if you don't continue on that altar of prayer and you begin to dwindle, some people, just like, I'll <laughs> say, by January you are blowing hot. By February you have reduced to 80 degrees centigrade. Then by March has dropped to 50. By April has dropped to 30. Before you get to June, you are already stone cold. So the enemy can be bad. So when you know that blowing hot in the things of the spirit is what keeps your mind, your heart alive, this sense of your authority in God, then why you get Moses, his face shone, and they couldn't stand before him. I pray this year, no evil will be able to stand before you. Sickness and disease will not find its place in your life. I remember that daughter of Zion that just shared a testimony. He said, I used to have all manner of pains and all that. Whatever is the cause of that, SS will be turned to AA this, this year. Yeah. Did I hear an amen there? Yeah. You drop down every hindrance of hell that is over and against your life. Maybe there are challenges at your home or whatever your parents are having issues. Like one daughter of Zion shared, sent a mail to me and said, she's on sideways now and said, she was all manner of depression. All true. But she was encouraged by her colleagues in her room. May God give you very faithful roommates. Amen. Did I hear an amen there? Amen. He said they kept encouraging me to come for chop and come for uh, chapel service. And suddenly, he said, I became so serious with chapel service that that two hours meant so much to me. And it made me to receive courage. And to the end, instead of allowing one depression to destroy her life, she was able to glide on greater heights. I pray, whatever evil that may be wovering around anyone here, God of heaven will destroy it in the name of Jesus. So, the altar of prayer is an amazing platform for change and turn around. How many desire of change and turn around this time? Change. Change of level. There's one thing I want some people to break here. The near syndrome. You are very close to it. There are some people, their GPA is now is 4.48. What is that? Ha! Ah, and you're in final level. Jesus, you will pray all the prayer in this world. Whatever will stop you from a first class. How will you carry 4.48? That's 0 0.02 to first class. Then you sit down there and not fight your way through. You're always close to it. Always close to it. Always close to it, but never to it. Today, on the prayer altar and all through this semester, whatever portion of blessing God has allotted for you, you will enter there in the name of Jesus. 
But you see, you cannot do all this thing casually. Those who are casual end up as casualty. You don't just say, you don't say, okay, I don't need. You see, some of you think I'm still small. At 17, David was already pursuing the beer. Please awake. Awake. At 17, David was chasing the lion. What are you there? This last day that, like I said, on, son, on Sunday when you resumed, there were students who were on the, on the HOD ground praying. They landed school and they entered prayer. There are some people who are sitting, okay, they have come again. Chaplin and his wala. Oh, all these people, all these people. They won't allow somebody to read prayer, prayer. Of that. And moreover, can they relax? At least they don't give us this week. Then next week we will start prayer. For where? Give you where? We hit the ground, or not even hit the ground. We are taking off in the air, flying. You came the next, we have the next morning covenant hour of prayer started. What kind of thing is that? There is no spiritual break. You break, they break you. I pray that strength is coming upon everyone individual in the name of Jesus. So the altar of prayer, amazing platform for change and turn around. We saw the Acts of the Apostles 6 and 4. To seven, but we will give ourselves continually. Let me tell somebody continually. Ah, to prayer and the ministry of the world. Continually. Continually. Prayer and fasting is the platform for enforcing every of our desired change. What do you desire that there should be change? You just wake up. Change. This thing must not be like this, and there is something to do to change it. I told them. Maybe in the covenant of when you see certain things as a trend in your family and it's something you don't like, you make a change. I gave the testimony. My grandfather, very heavy drunkard. My father also followed in the path. But glory be to God, five of us today now, none of us have taken to the bottom. Why? Salvation. Another thing, things. You just sit down. You see, some of us post sometimes. That's why some of the, as if there, is, there are no issues to deal with in your family. Is you are faking yourself. Everyone knows. That's why you're Christian. I tell people I don't need the encouragement to be a Christian. I know that I must stay on and stay on on this platform. That's the only rescue that I have. And I don't want my children to fight the battles I'm fighting. So we must pay the price. And there are some of you who are students here. Your parents have been doing all. And maybe your father is a pastor or your father is a committed or mother. They are committed, die-hard believers. Then you come to school and relax. Mommy has prayed that the prayer that I, they need to pray for me. They are fasting. Some of you know your parents before you came to school. They started fasting last year. When you were eating Christmas chicken, your father was fasting. Your mother was fasting. Then you come to school now, 21 days faith, prayer and fasting. You say, no, no, no. And my stomach used to do me somehow. <laughs> somehow indeed. <laughs> Praise God. Please. It's important. The altar of prayer is the altar of divine empowerment. Psalm 63. And verse 1 to this, say, Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. That's why we are in the early part of this year now. May you seek God early. Amen. My soul tasted for thee. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory so as I've seen in the sanctuary. Because of thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. So simple. Longing. Longing. I pray that today, everyone, student, faculty and staff, we reappraise our lives. Maybe somebody has been thinking, okay, okay, uh, okay, I can't do this. Uh, prayer, prayer every day. Pray in the morning, pray in the night, pray everywhere, pray everywhere. No. The, I've been in this commission for 25 years plus now, and uh, by the grace of God, there is not one team of the year that has not answered in my life. Not one. I have them written personal. Not one. Not one. I'm privileged to be at the base now. But when I was not in the... I don't play with these things. I don't play. When God's servant declared Operation Prayer for Life, I've started prayer for life. I would have allowed all manner of uh, trouble. No. I said here on Tuesday, 
We were in afternoon prayer. 12 noon, I was in the prayer time and praying and praying with some other staff and some other people who came. My wife was in the market in Benin there and was just going through New Benin market there. One crazy vehicle came from, no, just turning, he was just driving, ran into the vehicle. The only saving grace that that accident was not fatal was that the, the car hit the, the shock absorber. The shock absorber of the car, that is the tire tore, the shock absorber bent. Noonday, an attack from hell. But God preserved. I just thank God. When they called me that the car, I said, praise the Lord. He said, where were you? I was on the prayer altar. Because they were calling me. They couldn't get me. When I, they came, I said, that's it. God knew that one was in place. So you don't know this prayer altar you are going to be now. What rescue? One of our persons sometime in Bayesa, he was on the prayer altar. One evening prayer. The wife's aircraft in Abuja was just hooving and hooving and hooving and hooving. They couldn't land for over two hours. The wife was calling, he didn't get him. By the time he came out from prayer, he said, when they have landed there, he said, where were you? I was calling. He said, I was in, I was in place of prayer. Thank God the aircraft landed. Why? Rescue. Somebody was standing in the gap. May you be the one that God will use to stand in the gap for your family in the name of Jesus. So I tell students, yeah, you don't need the prayer. Your mother needs the prayer. Your father needs the prayer. Can you hear this student saying, he said, my father has been under one challenge of health or the other. Ha! Some are not in school now because school fees. Some parents are cracking their brain so much now. How would I pay these children's school fees? How do I make up? Then some will come here and start playing. You know, there's one dangerous prayer that parents should not pray for their children. I, I know a parent who will call, he said, whatever you pray this prayer, whatever you do to me, your children will do to you. I think that child should be afraid. It's a good prayer. Whatever you do to me, your children, so that you should be sensible from now. Don't think you're just, you're just you're drive your life anyhow. When you, your children pay you in the same coins that you are paying your parents now, then your, your, your brains will be awake. But that won't be anybody here. Because you will do well to your parents, your children will do better to you. Did I hear? Believe in amen there. Finally, the prayer altar is the altar of testimonies. And I know that testimonies will break forth in our lives in the name of Jesus. Did I hear? Believe in amen amen and there. I said testimonies will break forth on every side. Testimonies of advancement. Testimonies of change. Testimonies of the help of God. That the prayer altar makes available to us. So over to you, brethren, staff, student, everyone individual. Please, I beg of you, don't make light. Every time I, I stand on this altar, I often say, your sense of value will determine the flow of virtue. The instructions that God's servant give, you can be part of it or you can just decide, okay, they have been saying this thing. So I don't need any, anybody to tell me anything again. I know what to do. I'll fast my own kind of fast. This is a congregational fast. This is the season of prayer. Please invest. Put some things. They say in my place in Yoruba, that is what the bird eats is what he uses to fly. So eat something in the beginning of the year because you don't know when the evil day will come. Eat something. Prepare. Prepare. And in the preparation, remember, scripture said, the preparation of the heart, man, the answer of the tongue is of the Lord. The prayer altar is a prayer of fulfillment of prophecy. I charge you, Timothy, unto, he said, this charge I commit unto thee, Timothy, son, according to the prophecies which went forth before thee, that thou mightest war a good warfare. Warfare. Life is not funfair. Life is warfare. I pray that the warfare of this year you'll be counted for victory on every side. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Triumph on every side. Amen. You will not lose one battle. Amen. And God has given you victory already. Amen. You will walk in dominion amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. But listen to me. 
It's important that that's the first platform. But for everyone who is here, students and everyone, you need to reposition yourself. And that's why two prayers, we are going to pray as we close. One is the cry of mercy. I don't know, for you who students, I don't know how your, your holiday was. Were you on the right platform with Jesus? Or maybe there's somebody, all by the experiences you have had last semester, God has told you, when you get back to school, just commit your life to Christ. That's the only way out. A young man came looking at me and I asked him, in fact, when people have issues now, I'm not good going to tell them anything. I will tell you, go and sit back. You have heard too many things. Now, come, come and tell me what you want to do to bring a change. What you want to do. Commit yourself to God. Commit to the things of God. Work hard and the help of God will be available to you. Rise up on your feet. Father, I need your help. Blind Bartimaeus cried, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. So, somebody is here this morning, you want to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lift up your voice and pray. And maybe you want me to pray with you, rededicating your life to Christ. You've been out of the covering of God. Is Remember, the Lord's prayer said, Our Father who is in heaven. No prayer will be answered if your father does not know your name. And that's why our Father who art in heaven. I want you to lift up your voice right now and ask, Lord, wherever, whatever will be a hindrance to my prayer, to my life, whatsoever, let your mercy prevail for me right now. Will you lift up your voice in one minute and just pray that prayer? In one minute, just pray that prayer. And in case somebody is there, you desire to give your life to Christ, I want to pray with you. I want to take you in the presence of God and see the help of God being released to you right now. You desire the help of God. You know the things that are troubling you. Please step out right now so that God's grace will be available to you on every side. Oh, Father, let your mercy prevail. 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 Are you lifting up your voice? Let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail. Lord, let your mercy prevail. Lord, let your mercy prevail. Thank you and thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. As we close, we are going to pray this prayer. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 6. The everlasting mountain shall be scattered. The perpetual hills shall be brought down. I want you to pray vehemently from your spirit now. He said, 6. He said, he stood and measured the earth. And behold... And drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered, and the perpetual hill did bow. His ways are everlasting. Please lift up your voice to pray. Father, every everlasting mountain over and against my life, let them be scattered. Every perpetual hill, let it bow. This month, are you lifting up your voice? I don't know what is your perpetual hill. I don't know what has been standing as an everlasting mountain. Oh, but you need to make a declaration of faith right now. Lift up your voice. As you make your declaration of faith, Father, the everlasting mountain and the perpetual hill, let them be shattered, let them be destroyed. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you just looking or praying? You are praying to Jesus, you are not praying to me. Everlasting mountain, let it be shattered. Perpetual hill, let it be shattered. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Did I hear believing amen?